I still enjoy being outdoors and have a great respect for nature. I try to minimize my impact on the environment by following the principles of leave no trace and picking up my own trash as well as the trash that others have left behind. When foraging for wild edibles, I never take more than what I need and what is sustainable. I only collect plant materials with the permission of the property owner. You know, these redbud flowers are sure tasty. They'll make a good salad for dinner tonight. My earliest memories of camping are from family vacations at Yosemite National Park. We camped there every summer from uh, 1950 to 1956. We camped on the ground without any shelter or tents, and I don't remember ever being cold or wet. I want to show you how we did it. We gathered pine needles to make our beds. My two brothers and I slept in one area, and our parents slept about 25 feet away. A canvas tarp and a wool blanket were put on top of the pine needles to make our bed. Our parents' sleeping area had some sheets hung around the outside so that us kids couldn't see in. Mother said she wanted her privacy. The sleeping areas were open to the stars so we could see the stars and the moon all night long. It was wonderful. Sometimes dad would sing, it ain't gonna rain no more when we were setting up camp. I think this is what kept the rain away. Well, it ain't gonna rain no more, no more. It ain't gonna rain no more. How the heck can I wash my neck if it ain't gonna rain no more? Oh, a peanut said on a railroad track, it's hard all flutter. Around the bend came number 10, toot toot peanut butter. Oh, it ain't gonna rain no more, no more. It ain't gonna rain no more. How the heck can I wash my neck if it ain't gonna rain no more? Oh, my uncle built a chimney. He built it way up high. He had to tear it down again to let the moon go by. Oh, it ain't gonna rain no more, no more. It ain't gonna rain no more. How the heck can I wash my neck if it ain't gonna rain no more? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a wood could do chuck wood? He held a saw in his little bitty paw and a ton of wood he could. Oh, it ain't gonna rain no more, no more, it ain't gonna rain no more. How the heck can I wash my neck if it ain't gonna rain no more? My bedroll seemed much larger when I was a kid. I used three belts to hold it together. One is the strap that goes around my shoulder. The second belt, then the third belt. The ground cloth is on the outside of the roll. And when I was a kid, this was made out of canvas that was soaked or, or coated in linseed oil and that made it waterproof. And today I use a modern fabric, uh, a Cordura cloth, Cordura cloth or, or um, tarp. It's similar to canvas, but it's about half the weight, it's fire resistant, it's waterproof, and it's also breathable. When I was a kid, the blanket was plenty long enough and I slept in it like you do a regular bed. This is a standard military issue wool blanket. Mother sewed a cotton sheet to the blanket to make it softer. Now, since I'm not very good at sewing, I use safety pins to hold um, the sheet in place. If it got damp or was foggy, I'd put the ground cloth over me. When I grew up and got bigger, I was warmer and more comfortable to sleep on the diagonal with the blanket. I now tuck the end of the blanket over my feet and then take the side of the blanket that's closest to my feet and tuck it under me so that there are two layers of blanket under me. I do the same on the opposite side. 
I put on a wool cap and scarf and stay comfy warm. If it really gets cold or damp, I wrap the ground cloth over me in the same way I did the blanket. There isn't much condensation because this tarp is breathable. There are many additional ways to use the tarp. Uh, if the weather is really bad, I hang the tarp like you do a regular tent shelter. When I was a kid, I used a small backpack or cloth sack to hold my belongings for short hikes. We used whatever was available and whatever was cheap, often from military surplus stores. We did not buy special gear for camping. Today, I often carry a haversack for short overnight hikes. And uh, this is one of my favorites. It's a Hungarian gas mask ba bag. It's also called a bread bag. It was purchased from a surplus store a few years ago. I like it because it's lightweight, it's versatile, and it has these string tie-outs. And this is really nifty because I can hold all sorts of stuff tied to the outside of that uh, sack. My homemade bow saw. A hatchet from my Uncle Jim. And I know there are you know, special hatchets and maybe better hatchets, but this is from Uncle Jim and it means a lot to me and it works very well. And in here, in the sack, there are three little compartments on the outside. This one includes an emergency light and compass and maps. This pocket contains a small trowel, a collapsible trowel. This pocket contains a first aid kit and matches. I keep my matches in a match safe. Okay, who can guess what this is? This is a 35 millimeter film canister. And back when I was young, these uh, you know, pictures were taken with, with film and they were put in canisters. And this is an aluminum canister in my era. The newest ones are made out of a plastic when you can buy film for cameras. And in my dad's era, these canisters were made out of a steel that was galvanized. And inside of the haversack, I have my food. I have a little cooking pot, campfire in a can, oops, oatmeal. And very importantly, my Boy Scout little jug for drinking water. And this is another little stove, military surplus. Also, I have a fire kit. This fire kit is a gift from several different people. One person did the leather work. Another person gifted me a little striking item. And you'll see how I use the rest of the gifts in just a minute. I'm gonna light a fire. My fire kit contains a striker that's a piece of steel uh, that's hardened. And that will be flaked off. Small pieces of that piece of steel will be flaked off by a rock. That's, uh, this is the flint. It can be agate, quartz, granite, uh, a rock that's hard enough to flake off the uh, steel. And when the steel flakes off, it's red hot, and that's where you see the sparks. And there's sparks showering down. Now those sparks will catch oh, uh, cotton or materials that, that quickly turn to flame. And I have a little box that I keep these in. This is an Altoid can, tin. 
and I've got charred punk wood, charred cloth, cotton cloth, and when the sparks hit it, then it forms an ember, and then I ignite that ember with some material that, that turns into flame very quickly. I pick this up and go like this. Once I find all sorts of stuff like this, it's called a bird's nest when you process these materials so that they quickly turn into flame. For many years, I tried to learn how to light a fire using flint and steel, but I was consistently unsuccessful. YouTube friends from all over the world provided help, but it wasn't until the bushcraft meetup last spring in Tennessee where I actually learned how to do it. I gained my ember badge for flint and steel. I had my first ember with flint and steel and, and lit a fire this way. The person who led that activity uh, for the Ember Badge was Billy Joe Denny. He demonstrated how to do it and he taught us how to do it. It was awesome. Thank you, Billy Joe. Billy Joe has entered Les Stroud's contest to be on Survivor Man. Check out his video, the link's listed down below, and vote. He would make an excellent contestant. I'm also pleased to announce that several of my subscribers have entered, entered into the contest. For example, the State Parkers, Pitfire Outdoors, and Untold Idaho. I can't wait to see a member of our YouTube bushcraft community on Survival Man. I think it's time to begin dinner. It's, it's a little bit after five and I'm getting hungry. Our salad is fresh dandelion leaves and red buds. Now what I like to do is I take a bite of red buds first and then a little sip of stew. So you can have that along with me. Mmm. A little bit of the broth from the stew. It's seasoned just right. You'd love it. Here, look at it up close. You can see the greens that are in it. Those are dandelion leaves. And the carrots and the onions. And this beef jerky is something. It combines beautifully with, with the vegetables. Back when I was a kid, mother used to tell a story that one year when we were camping at Yosemite, she looked out from her sleeping area and saw a bear, a black bear, walking through the camp and walking between us kids and looking at us and stepped over us. Didn't bother us, just walked through. She was terrified, but it didn't keep uh, us from camping on the ground like that. It just had a good story to tell. Anyway, there'll be fun things to think about. I'm going to look at the campfire for a while 
and they'll later crawl into bed. It's so beautiful. It's calm. The stars are out. Well, sweet dreams. See you guys in the morning. I'm going to stay awake until the fire goes out. The bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain to see what he could see, to see what he could see, to see what he could see. The other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain was all that he could see. The bear went over the Good morning guys. I hear birds. Oh, I slept really well. It was so comfortable. The sky is just awesome. Let me show you what it looks like. For breakfast, we're going to have eggs, oatmeal, and double hot chocolate. You know, you don't have to refrigerate eggs. In the old days, uh, when you just got them directly from the hens, you didn't wash the eggs. They have a natural covering on them that keeps them from spoiling. Well, now that we, we buy them from grocery stores, and to look pretty, the eggs are all washed and they look thoroughly white and clean but that washes the, the natural bloom off of them. The bloom kept air from getting into the eggs and so they didn't spoil. Now these are some eggs out of the refrigerator so they were nice and fresh and clean looking. And to keep them so that I can spend a, a week or more with these eggs unrefrigerated, I've put uh, some oil on them. Uh, some people use olive oil, some people use mineral oil, but anything that keeps the air from getting into the eggs will keep the eggs from spoiling. And so you can have fresh eggs on a camping trip. Well, I'm first going to start by boiling some water. Put the eggs in, and here's my little fire. Let's see. That'll work. The eggs are about ready. Here they are. Now I did change the water because I didn't want the oil that was on the eggs in my hot chocolate. Let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're, they're just right. Soft boiled eggs in the eggshell. Mmm. You know, you don't need a cup or any container if you cook eggs like this. Mmm. Okay, now for the uh, hot chocolate. I pour it into about a cup of water.
That sure is good. Now before I've drunk all the hot chocolate, I add oatmeal to it. This is a uh, an instant oatmeal. And so it, it doesn't really need to be boiled, just heated. And now I have oatmeal chocolate, chocolate oatmeal. And it's sweetened from the chocolate. Mmm. Breakfast is all in one cup. Very convenient. Well, I'm going to sit here for a while and enjoy the morning and then clean up the site. Always leave your campsite better than when you found it. Until next time, peace.